All right, new battery. Back to the letters again. Um, this is from TC, personal and last initial there, from South Carolina. Um, Dear Brother Ryan and family, greetings. I hope this letter finds you with much joy in the Lord. I have wanted to write you for some time now and let you know what a blessing your ministry has been in my life. I thank God every day for your faithfulness in the ministry and for sharing the gospel and the truth of God's word as it is written in the King James Bible. First, let me tell you a little of my testimony. I was born to a Southern Baptist family raised in Babel buildings, <laughs> made a profession of faith at the young age of seven. Of course, I was led in the sinner's prayer and I was then numbered with the flock, baptized a couple weeks later. Never once did I understand what sin was, nor did I understand for many years thereafter that salvation brings a changed life. I was the same way. I, was, I think I was eight years old, and the same thing happened to me. Always I was confused about the Word of God, because in my family in the Babel building I was brought up in, used many versions. I had no real grounding in God's Word because of that. I remember all the preachers correcting God's Word, quoting Greek and Hebrew, making the Bible say, what they wanted it to say, never once believing that God had preserved his word perfectly. Psalm 12, 6 through 7, I guess to them meant with man's help, God preserved his word. In the English language, language this of course rubbed, me, rubbed off on me in a negative way. And needless to say, by this point, I'm sure you have realized that I was never truly converted, that I was a sinner unsaved, unchanged, unconverted. I was the same way. My parents also never really grounded me in the faith. Same way. <laughs> Uh, they were very liberal in a lot of ways. They made sure that we were in that building every Sunday morning and night and Wednesday and Bible schools and anything else in between that was a function of that church. Um, so living unconverted and unchanged and very much a sinner, I participated in many ungodly things both in the church at home, at school, anywhere and anything, anytime, whatever pleased my flesh. I did, but I was in church every time the door was open, so it must be okay. I did the same thing, exactly. At least I made myself believe that lie. Later I met who I am currently married to for the last 19 years. After we got married, we continued to go to church. And every time I do this, he's putting it in quotations. So I'm not just adding that. Instead of being the church. Children were born to us. My oldest is 18 now. My youngest is six. They were also brought up in the same heretical lifestyle. After we were married for six years, I got ordained as a deacon, then the following year ordained as a pastor. Keep in mind, this whole time I'm not saved, nor have my beliefs changed. I did use a King James Version Bible, but constantly searched the Hebrew and Greek to change it. Unfortunately, I believed man rather than God. I should have known better, but this was just a product of my raising, also my lost state. Also, I got caught up, caught up in this numbers game, leading people in sinners' prayer, baptizing people, all the while keeping up with the numbers for the association, and I got caught up in a sense of pride because that year our church was number 27 and the number of baptisms of the state of North Carolina for the Southern Baptist Convention. Disgusting, I know now, but then I was puffed up. Around this time, I began to become depressed to almost a suicidal state. I could not understand how I could not find joy in the Lord. I could not find peace in the Lord. I was in a constant state of confusion. I was not happy at home. I was not happy anywhere. I was lost but did not know it. I began to consume alcohol, alcohol to try to deal with it. I dove <clears throat> into pornography to deal with my unhappy marriage. I began to hate God. I began to blame everyone else but myself. Never once considered that I might be lost and on my way to hell because I was self-righteous and full of pride. It was misery. I finally swallowed enough pride the last Sunday of December of 2018. I resigned my position, my position at church. This is when the Lord began to work in my life. I knew enough truth to know that something wasn't right in my life. I began to doubt everything I had ever believed, so I began to pray and walk in the woods behind my house every day. The first thing that God settled in my mind was the Bible version issue. I began to realize that everything contradicted the King James Version, um, that it really stood alone. Bear in mind that I was still very much depressed, very much wanting to die, very much confused, even more so now, because my whole life I was told they're all God's word just easier to read. And now as the conviction of the Lord was falling upon me about the King James Version, I began to be more confused. <clears throat> so that's when I started looking for, to YouTube. I first came across Stephen Anderson <laughs> because I did a search for King James Version only preachers. 
He was the first one I saw, so I began to watch his video. I actually made it through three before I felt something was amiss with him. Then I clicked on one of your videos. I can't remember the first one I watched. I'm pretty sure I watched all your videos by now, but I know it dealt with debunking the Trinity. I became angry for the first time in nearly 40 years of living. I never had my toes stepped on by a preacher, but I could not turn you off. Thank God. All of a sudden, I began to search the scriptures, as you always tell us to do at the beginning of your videos, and things began to make sense. This was on January 29th. I went to bed that night a lost man. I woke up the next morning on January 30th, a lost man. Then I went on my usual walk in the woods, and I got saved. Life has been different in many ways, much harder. As I, mature, as I mature in my walk with the Lord, I see Matthew 10, verse 34 through 36 being fulfilled. Most of my family thinks I'm crazy. I know now, thanks be to God, first in, in your videos next, that that's, what's going to, that that's what's going to happen to those who are truly saved. I thank God truly for opening my eyes, and I thank you for being zealous for the Lord and the true gospel of a changed life of repentance, of coming to the Lord broken, and letting the Lord put us back together again. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. Um, as you always say that you are not our standard, it is God's word in the King James Version, as perfectly pres preserved perfectly in the English language for English-speaking people and in all matters of faith and practice. I can see clearly now it's my prayer that my wife, my children, and my parents come to the saving grace of our Lord, for I'm afraid we are all poisoned by the liberal gospel of easy believism. I keep trying to teach my family through God's word. I am seeing support from my wife, so I believe that the Lord is dealing with her heart. My oldest child, I also see some positive change, but my next oldest, I am worried about. His name is letter J. Um, my youngest child, I know, is too young, and if we were still in a building called a church, that he would probably have already made a false profession of faith and been baptized and become a number instead of a conversion. But I thank God that he has opened my eyes, and I will trust God in my youngest son's life. I will stay out of God's way and truly see that little fellow be born again. My parents, I truly can't believe that they are saved. It's hard for me to say. It's hard for me <clears throat> to admit, but that's the way it is. I'm the same way. They're divorced, which I know doesn't disqualify nobody, for there is nothing that disqualifies anybody other than taking that last breath unconverted. They have both been married three times each. My mom was the one who taught me the things I thought I knew of God, my dad was always working off, and I never saw him much, so you can see from early confusion that my mom was very much wrong, also the preachers we were under. My mom thinks it is cultish to take a firm stand on being a King James Version Bible believer, as I know I am, and I'm trying to lead my household in that same belief, and I do believe that it is a salvation issue. Absolutely. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. How can you claim to be saved when you don't even believe the Word of God? You know, that this book is the Word of God. It's Again, it's simple. It's really not that difficult. People make it more difficult, but simple. Also, my dad married a Pentecostal woman and is in and is all kinds of confused. Um, I uh, lose your salvation, taking talking in tongues, etc., etc. My parents have been divorced for 20 years, and for the first time in 20 years, they have come together on one issue, that I'm crazy because I don't have my faith in a build, building called a church. They're not grateful to God that I am truly converted now and not on my way to hell. They think I have always been um, since I was seven years old. I think that's crazy. <laughs> yes. Isn't it weird? You know, it's so weird. I, I just, it boggles my mind. You know, I, I say, I don't understand it, but, but then I, yes, I do understand because it's what Jesus was saying. You know, he, he marveled at their unbelief, but yet he understands why they're not believing. But you still have to marvel. You still think, you know, uh, my life was in, in a terrible state as a professing Christian um, before I got truly born again. And I mean, just no direction in life, no anything. I got saved. My life changed. The Lord brought me a wife. The Lord gave me a home, you know, my actual own place, uh, gave us a son. And my life is better now than it's ever been. And my family thinks I'm crazy. And most of them don't even talk to me. I think so you would have things to do with me back when I was ready to blow my brains out. But now that the Lord's blessing me like crazy, now you're saying, oh, you're really going off the deep end. You know, I marvel at that. I know exactly what you're going through, brother. It's weird what people, you know, say about when you when you truly get saved. It's 
Anyhow, continuing back to the letter. Um, regardless, I have let all know that I plan to stick with Jesus, that I will forsake all and pick up my cross and follow after Jesus. I will stand on my convictions of the King James Version, being infallible, being inspired, and being perfect, and being our sole authority in all matters of faith and practice. I will not go to a building called the church anymore. God has used your ministry to open my eyes on all these issues, and it's not you I follow, it's God in His Word. I am so thankful that you use so much Scripture in all of your teachings. I see now that there is no other way but to use multiple scriptures because our word that God um, has given us does not contradict itself. It is perfect. No more uh, one verse religion for me. No more taking scripture out of context. I will rest in the Lord every day of the week, not just one day. I will worship the Lord every day of the week, not just one day. When I fall and mess up, I will give it to the Lord. I'm sorry, brother, that this letter was so long and probably has misspellings and not correct grammar or punctuation. Don't apologize for that. I have my own issues. <laughs> but I wanted to get that out to you. Hopefully, if it will encourage you. It has. It was just a long way to say thank you. Through your teachings, I have learned how to rightly divide the word of truth. I love you in the Lord, and your family probably will never see you until we are in our glorified bodies. But at least I can say thank you, and you have been a blessing to me. Please pray for me and my family. My wife is S. My children are A, J, J, and N. Um, first initial. It is great to be a saved sinner instead of an unsaved sinner. Amen. In Christ, Brother T.C. That's a good letter there. Uh, that's October 2nd, 2019. So, okay. Oop, there's the envelope for that one. Um, Continuing on here with letters, checking my recording stuff here. This one is from Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Uh, T, well, I'll just say Thompson is the last name, you know, there. Um, Ryan, I've been watching your videos for about five years now. I was a Christian when I started, then became a deist, and now I'm an atheist. Don't worry, it's not because of you. Just wanted to say that I really like your content, and I appreciate the way you approach topics. You cannot be lumped into a box of stereotype, and you seem to really think for yourself. I also really like your videos about nutrition and health topics. I get headaches, so your headache video has really has some really good advice about diet, organic food, etc. It's been a pleasure to see you growing, your boy growing up. My son is about his age. I became an atheist by studying textual criticism and the manuscripts and how the Bible came to be, uh, you are a Christian that actually knows about the manuscripts, and I appreciate that. I appreciate your love for the King James Version and that you have an intellectual understanding of it. You actually make me want to open one up and start reading A 1611. Even though I disagree with you on most topics, I still appreciate the way you approach your worldview. You also live in Maine, which is where my family is from. Wishing you, uh, your family the best. B. T. Um, <clears throat> and he's got an edu email address there so he's going to university and get your head screwed up there um textual criticism uh when you study that as a lost person by the way i uh, just got to say this and and with all um love and concern for you um you were never a christian okay if you're a christian you're born into jesus christ you don't come out of that all right that's you are a victim of false religion as i once went through um and the textual criticism thing, I could teach textual criticism in a way that would destroy your faith in the Bible because I would leave out certain facts. Okay, um, you got to be real careful of that textual criticism stuff. I have studied it extensively. I've read a lot of books for and against the King James Bible, the received text, the, the different manuscript lines and all these families of manuscripts and the majuscule and the minuscule and the, the unseals and the curses. And I, I've been through all that stuff. And you can teach it in a way that just say, look at these errors, look at these problems here, look at how many times these manuscripts contradict each other and, and how many times there's copyist errors and it's crossed out and rewritten and whatever else. And you mean to tell me that this is God's perfect word? I could take, I could go to any university and teach textual criticism and destroy everybody's faith in there in God and his word. You see? Or I can read it and, and see, okay, there's a Catholic uh, conspiracy, if you will, here to destroy people's faith in the Word of God. 
That's why they are the ones that are behind a lot of this stuff. They are the ones that are bringing out a lot of these false manuscripts. Um, uh, David Daniels has done some really good work on the thing of the Sinaiticus manuscripts, uh, manuscript. Excuse me. Um, it was found by Constantine von Tischendorf. And, I mean, you get into that whole thing, it looks like it was a forgery. And, I mean, very, very good evidence that uh, there was a Greek man, Simonides or something like that, and he, he basically looks like he was the one that forged this manuscript back in the 19th century, made it look old, and Tischendorf basically, you know, discovered it. And there's all kinds of questionable things. I mean, some of the pages are faded, some are not. You know, it's, it's nonsense. And all these new versions, all the, the Vatican versions that have come out since 1881, they all say, you know, this is not in the two oldest, and, you know, this verse in the King James Bible is not in the two oldest and best manuscripts. Um, and, you know, everybody, oh, 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 the two oldest and best manuscripts. And they're dealing with a forgery. And then the other one is Codex B, which is the Vaticanus manuscript. And that thing there, it, you know, we've only, only uh, they, they're, the Vatican gives out copies of these things. Nobody's actually seen the actual manuscript. I think uh, there was a guy, uh, I can't think of what his name is right now. It wasn't, was it Scrivener? I forget. One of the guys, um, back in the late 1800s, and he actually, you know, got a chance to look at the thing, and he said, just, you know, kind of through a glass case, and he said, there were all kinds of issues with the Vaticanus manuscript. But, you know, they, they dredged these two manuscripts out, up out of nowhere, and all of a sudden now the King James Bible's no good. And, you know, see, it depends on your, your way that you think about the Bible. If I want to come to the Bible and say that it's not God's perfect word, I can use manuscript evidence to prove that. If I want to look and say, no, this King James Bible is God's preserved word, I can look and I can see the corruption that's introduced through the Alexandrian line coming in, and I can see the corruption from the Vatican, and I can say it's all tax on the word of God. And I can look at the Greek Textus Receptus, and I can say, okay, there's some good stuff coming in there, but the King James Bible, let me just say this, is not word for word from the Textus Receptus. The King James translators knew better than that. Why? Because the Greek Textus Receptus comes from the Greek Orthodox Church, and they have their own set of issues. It's kind of like, you know, Catholicism is, you know, beer, and, and Greek Orthodoxy is kind of light beer or something. They're both bad, <laughs> all right? Understanding what I'm trying to say there. Um, the King James translators not only used Receptus-type manuscripts, um, they also used a lot of ancient translations of the of the Bible. And I mean, seven years, these, you know, 54 translators, 47 by the end of it, some had to leave, some died in seven years. Um, but these guys made a tremendous work here. And that's not even the way I prove the, the King James Bible. You have manuscript evidence that lines up with this book. I mean, amazing things. When you get, get into it from a Bible-believing standpoint, people that are actually trying to defend the book and not tear it down, but the main reason I'm a Christian is because this book tells me what's going to happen. It tells me about man, and I can see it play out. Yep, people are this way that this Bible condemns people. I can see it. Um, and it also tells me what's going to happen in the future, and it's coming to pass, exactly as this book says. So I, I do pray that you look into things. Um, there, uh, Thompson, Mr. Thompson. I'll say that. Um, I should probably do more stuff on, on manuscript evidence and things because I know that a lot of people have their faith destroyed in the Bible through that, and it just sickens me. Guys like James White. James White is a Jesuit. That guy's that guy's such a devil. Uh, look forward to seeing him at the Great White Throne Judgment and being cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. He is a sick, sick individual. But um, uh, here is a little card. Thank you card. Brian, you've touched my life in ways you will never be aware of. God's blessing to you and your family, sister in Christ. The name S there. Um, thank you for that. That is from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Uh, really a blessing to hear that. I love to hear that the Lord's used me to change people's lives. Um, T.S. from Tyanesta, Pennsylvania. Dear Brother Brian, glad to see you are getting things moved and have a new ministry headquarters. I hope you're living 
arrangements are coming along as well. I've been able to get a decent amount of tracks out the last two months on my dual sports through the Northern PA. Um, Northern PA, I can't read that one word. Uh, and the PA Wilds. I also been witnessing to some Catholics at work, which got me thinking more about the term God the Son. Maybe this was already mentioned in one of your videos or in the comments, but by using the word God the Son, it opens the door for the Catholic heresies of Mary the Mother of God and the Immaculate Conception, because of course God must have a mother and father, hence the term God the Son. It's a good point. Um, but by using the Bible word Son of God, it gives distinction of who he is when he um, appeared to man as a man, thus slamming the door on these Catholic heresies and the three God Trinitarians. I don't know if I explained that very well, but I think you probably understand what I am saying. Yes, I do. Looking forward to more in-depth studies that you have mentioned. May God continue to bless you and your family. Continued prayers and support. Um, thank you, brother. And, and yes, very good point. Um, by saying God the Son, um, they'll say Holy Mary, Mother of God, you know, and things, the Catholics, which that does not appear anywhere in Scripture. Mary's never called the Mother of God. Um, you know, uh, you know, there is distinction within the Godhead, okay? And you have to understand that stuff. Uh, not a modalist heretic that says that's just Jesus transforming into the Father and the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus at different times. I don't teach that. Next we have S.M. from Marquette, Michigan. Um, hello, I'm 72 years old, a retired mainframe systems developer and live by myself on a beautiful nine acre plot of land in a rural area 17 miles from Marquette, Michigan. Thanks mostly to Bill Wise and his 23 Minutes in Hell videos, Mary Kay Baxter and others. I am happy beyond words to proclaim that I, a former Catholic, am really and truly a born-again Christian follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd be real careful with that Bill Wise and Mary Baxter stuff. Um, this, the issue I'm having is finding a non-501c3 church in my area for fellowship. The closest thing to a true biblical church up here in the central Upper Peninsula is the missionary church in Marquette, but is too, it too is a 501c3 corporation. I have a problem being part of any church that has allowed itself to become 501c3 and subject to government rules. Amen. You should have a problem with that. Besides from my neighbors who belong to it, I learned that they use the New International Version of the Bible and not the King James Bible that concerns me also. It should. I'm writing to you in the hope that perhaps King James Video Ministries might have information on any Christian church or other home-based ministries in the UP. If you do, I'd be most appreciative to you for sharing that. In the meantime, I will continue my own practice of daily Bible reading, prayers to Jesus, and staying really, really tight with Jesus. I also carry small pieces of paper inviting folks to check out Bill Weiss to others uh, should an opportunity present itself. I promise I will keep you any in info you share confidential. Uh, for your information, I avoid Facebook and other social media. If you wish, my email is, and my landline is, and, um, thank you for whatever information you can provide. By our Lord's grace, may both of you, us grow closer to Jesus every blessed day. We still have his precious gift of life, your brother in Christ, SM. Um, yeah, the whole 23 minutes in hell thing and whatever else, um, it's been a while since I looked into all that stuff, but you really got to be careful of that, some of that stuff. Um, mm. um, as far as worshiping with other people and, and things like that, um, God right now is calling people out of these church buildings and, you know, exposing what these church buildings really are. Um, myself, I've preached, um, you know, there aren't many others that have preached before I did on the whole, you know, from a King James Bible leaving standpoint. There were heretics that were speaking against church buildings, but then they get you into these radical church buildings where it's just kind of a, you know, everybody's sitting around a campfire singing Kumbaya or something like this. Uh, everybody gets involved, women can preach if they feel like it, whatever, you know, tongue-flapping, charismaniac, blibbity-blabbity, uh, new versions and the whole deal. Um, so uh, avoid that stuff. Um, but I believe that, you know, the Lord has helped me as well as some others to come out preaching against these church buildings uh, for a lot of reasons, not just the government incorporation and the rules of, 
that your speech is censored by the government to maintain your 501c3 status. Um, but there's a whole lot of other issues with going to going to church. Um, and I believe the Lord is, is calling His people out of those buildings um, because they're going to be Antichrist worship centers in the future. And the Lord is just simply saying to people, worship on your own. And He'll bring people across your path with other people. All right, next we have DD initials, first and last DD initials from Ontario, Canada. Um, faith, is the, faith is the foundation of all, in turn giving up trust in the world and love of it seems a necessary progression. I try to witness Christ to at least one person a day. I see myself as a soldier in Christ, uh, according to Ephesians chapter 6. My grandfather went to Auschwitz in the Holocaust. He was murdered by the authorities. He was considered a Jew. But my dad's family at least nominally called themselves Christian. My grandfather's name was, was uh, Max Oasis uh, Shapira. Oasis salvation in Greek, I recently found out. Yes, the Holocaust was real, but I don't buy the mainstream narrative. Too many things don't add up. I preach pre-trib rapture. Um, so, thank you for your wonderful work. And thank you for your letter and for your support of the ministry. Um, I'm not, when I say that, you know, I go against these Holocaust deniers, um, I'm not saying that the whole story of the Holocaust as it's told is just word for word accurate and true and whatever. I just, I'm going against this papist, stupid nonsense, anti-Jew stuff where they say that the, Zion, the Zionists fake the whole Holocaust thing. There was no Holocaust. That stuff's nonsense. Um, next we have D.O. from Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, <sighs> Dear Brother Ryan, I attended a Baptist church recently and they handed out a pamphlet for something called Faith Bible Institute. I ended up reading it and looking into it online and the pastor that is running the thing is clearly a Mason. He does brazen Freemasonic hand signs on his videos of him available on YouTube, mostly the upside uh, pyramid. However, I have noticed him throwing others. Uh, these are calling cards, if you will, to other Masons. That is, it's how they identify one another silently in plain sight. His name is John T. Yates, this pastor. One of the ones that they'll do, the, the probably the most famous, famous hidden, you know, is the hidden hand of masonry. They'll do this type of thing. Somebody's going to take a screenshot of that for sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the masons do hand signals. You know, it isn't some guy and, and, he, and he sneezes and, and, you know, does some kind of a, you know, like that, and they go, oh, you got a hand sign. No, they're very clearly posing in pictures, you know, and, and, whatever else and yeah I understand also interesting the program's acronym is FBI with the website domain of FBIclass.com <laughs> these church buildings are just oh man while this might not necessarily uh, intentional it's still worth pointing out and at least it is the sort of a thing that makes one think wow that's a bit ironic and you'll see what I mean in light of everything else I'm about to tell you the program is a three-year Bible uh, that a church can show in, to their congregation once a week via DVDs, so it's pretty extensive and regular. Now, just like the new versions, what this appears to be is offering a lot of truth but twisting it, and with a lot of poison mixed in. And sadly, supposedly over 1,400 churches use slash used this program, according to the pamphlet and the videos they have posted. They also have six textbooks that are used for the program. I have not Seen, seen one myself, and another one called Wilmington's Guide to the Bible. This particular textbook also I'm not privy to either. I'm sure these things, especially the six textbooks, have all kinds of poisonous things intermittently spaced throughout them. I can pretty much guarantee that. All right, sorry about that. Battery went dead. Keep going here. It says, so here are some things about it that are disgusting to even type out. To start, I saw in this video a man exposing some things about this guy's methods. For one example, Yates in his program uses a cosmic rape argument. That is, he says that if God did not give man free will and then save them, it would be equivalent to cosmic, cosmic rape. This is a disgusting way to frame the argument, and no Christian would use this sort of filthy worldly rhetoric when, when contending for our Lord. Also, the man in, this, in the video rightly points out that it is, that, that is also a fall, fallacious argument. 
argumentation because God is righteous and holy and to bring up something that he, by virtue of his righteous nature, would never do is fallacious argumentation and a completely inappropriate way to preach and contend for the faith. Absolutely. Another thing Yates does, as delineated in the video I linked in regards to the correct premillennial return of Jesus Christ stance, Yates advocates for the stance then quips that, but he might be wrong. Really? Then apparently he goes into no detail about why he would say such a thing. See this sort of thing, this sort of doubt he's trying to seed into people. This program will be especially damaging to babes in Christ, and I think those who are precisely the kind of precisely the kind of people that will be more inclined to use the program. But it gets even worse. I found this Quizlet page. Um, uh, some one had uploaded to study for the Program Institute, and he's got the link there. Um, and in it, there will be doctrinal things that are correct. However, there are things mixed in that are false, notably in regards to tongues. The information will be correct to an extent. It's very subversive. So in the link, it will talk about how tongues were real spoken languages and the primary purpose of tongues was for unbelieving Israel, the Jews in the first century. All good so far, however, then crap like this is mixed in there. It is a historical fact that tongues ceased from the days of the first century until the beginning of the 20th century, 2,000 years, when a modern Pentecostalism began. So apparently this guy says tongues came back 2,000 years later <laughs> with modern Pentecostalism. As he prep peppers this crap in the midst of stuff that is actually good, it was too grieving to look through some of this, so I stopped pretty quickly. Once again, their strategy is clear. They're mixing in good, correct things with a lot of poison. More things that are sick to even type out. I saw in this video of this Yates guy, which someone recorded of him as an interview on the FBI course. Here's the link. What's the link? Um, and it happens around 1148. He talks about that the first thing they are going to study is the doctrine of Satan. Really. But of course, that's the first thing this sick pervert wants to talk about. And right after that, he says, then we are going to talk about the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. What an improper, strange transition. This gate... Yates guy is a ravening, ravening wolf. It's pretty bad, and it's clear what the program is doing. Wicked spiritual forces strive to control and deceive all sides and set up snares, and that's to keep people from the truth of Jesus Christ. And of course, also they seek to infiltrate the church as sheep in wolves' clothing um, to lead astray even saved Christians. This thing is a year program, and up front the guy touts good, correct, biblical, biblically doctrine, salvation by grace through faith, eternal security, pre-trib, premillennial, and so forth. But this program by Yates is clearly to target specifically Christians and to at least mix up some of them. I hope you have a chance to look, take a look at this and perchance that you might expose this Freemason Yates guy if the Lord puts it upon your heart to do so. Thanks for all your hard work in the ministry, Brian. I will make remembrance of you and your family in prayer. God bless. Brother D.O. Initials. Okay. Continuing on here. Okay, next we have a um, letter from uh, a guy named Dennis. Uh, I don't know which one, where this is from. Uh, but I'll read it here. There's the letter. Dear Brother Brian, greetings. I know it's been a few months since I last wrote to you, but I hope you and your family are doing well. I wanted to talk to you about some things going on in my life right now. First, Brother Brian, I would like to let you know about this year. I've been making a greater effort to take time out to read my King James Bible and pray. As a result, I've been able to grow in my walk with the Lord. Also, the Lord has been revealing to me that no matter how hard I try, I'm no longer going to fit in with my lost friends and family. When they talk about alcohol or make obscene jokes in front of me, I try to move away from the person speaking. When they talk about television, films, or secular music as if they're the greatest things ever, I just think to myself, who cares? <laughs> I'm becoming less interested in that junk every day. When they talk about what's going on in their lives, I can't relate. I can see clearly now that I don't fit in with this world anymore. Yeah. As a result of this revelation, I've realized that my friendships weren't going to last much longer. And Brother Ryan, this might be it. After almost 27 years, I'm 31 now, I might just lose my friendship with the man I've called my best friend all these years, named uh, Roy, 
Let's say the name there. By the way, I've realized that I failed to mention in my written testimony to you that Roy was attending Columbus and his pushing me to attend was one of the reasons why I ended up at Columbus. Please forgive me for that. At the end of the next month, it'll have been eight years since I came before the Lord as a broken, repentant sinner in need of a Savior. Roy, his wife, Elle, their families, and that group of friends are essentially all Catholics. However, we've stayed friends all these years. It looked like Roy accepted me even though I became a Christian, and so I stuck around. There are times when I've given in to peer pressure from him and done things I know I shouldn't have done. It's always the way it works. I realize now that if, as a new Christian, I would have delved into my King James Bible in prayer, and if I would have plainly told everyone I knew that I had repented of my Roman Catholicism and become a Christian, I might have matured faster, and maybe our friendship might not have lasted this long. Maybe I wouldn't be struggling so much with the flesh, even today. I freely admit that I made some big mistakes as a new Christian. We all do. Nonetheless, I can't change the past. Anyway, as the years passed, I stuck around with Roy. I've even tried to witness to him a few times with the opportunity when the opportunity arose to no avail. So here's what happened. Roy and L recently had a son, being Catholics. They're going to have an infant baptism for him this Saturday, April 27th, at St. Timothy's Catholic Church here in Miami. Knowing what the Lord has revealed to me about the Roman Catholic Church and all the problems behind the totally unscriptural practice of infant baptism, there's no way I can attend. Also knowing Roy all these years, I knew he wasn't going to take it lightly when I told him I wasn't going to the baptism. Naturally, we got into a fight when I finally talked to him, and it really looks like our friendship might be over. I mean, even if we were to reconcile our friendship at this point, it's definitely not going to be the same. Yep. Please pray for me, Brother Brian. I thought this was going to be easier, but it's not. I had been praying fervently that the Lord would give me the strength to be ready to talk to Roy about not going to the baptism. At the same time, I had been putting off talking to him because I, about it because I knew exactly what would happen. When he finally asked me if I was going, I had to answer him. Now we've gotten into this fight, and I realize that I'm just not just losing him as a friend. I'm also going to have to say goodbye to his family, his wife, his wife's family, and everyone else in that group of friends. Roy, Elle, and both of their families were like family to me. Over the years, I started to drift apart from everyone else in the group, but we were still relatively close. It's like I'm losing 90% of my remaining closest friends. Nevertheless, I realize that if I have to make the sacrifice for my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then so be it. There's nothing I could ever do to repay him for what he's done for me now, or for what, for what he's done for me. Yeah, if Jesus Christ died a horrible death and, and suffered and he was up there naked and on the cross dying and people were making fun of him and things, you can suffer a little bit. I've had to suffer as well. And you will if you're a Christian. Anyway, Jesus is my best friend now, not Roy. He's known it, by the way. Back in December, he mentioned my best friend's dad referring to someone else. At the time, I was floored, but I held my peace. Not anyone else. Not even you. I owe my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ everything. I should have realized sooner that I didn't, don't owe anyone else anything. However, I do believe the Lord is calling me to give you that first donation I sent you. Your ministry has helped me a lot, Brother B or Brother Ryan. I want to help. I want to help you keep making videos. Through your videos, I've learned a lot and I've been encouraged and challenged to grow in my walk with the Lord. I'm going to include a donation with this letter. Please accept the amount enclosed. Also, if the Lord tarries, I hope to send you. I'll just. It's about donation stuff. Next, I wanted to let you know that I emailed um, certain somebody. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'm going to leave that out. Some other information there that I don't really want to get into. Personal things and stuff like that of other people. So I can't really talk about that. Lastly, I wanted to let you know that this whole fight with Roy has gotten me fired up against the Roman Catholic Church. I'm more angry at Rome than anything else. I hate that almost everything, everyone I know would rather stay spiritually bound to the horror of Revelation 17. They'd rather stick with their false church and, and that lets them get drunk and do all types of other sins as long as they confess them to a priest instead of coming to Jesus for forgiveness. And they'd rather believe in these unscriptural lies that make that man can make it to heaven through good works, that there's more way, many ways to God, despite John 14, 6, saying the exact opposite, and that they can pray to Mary, saints, angels, dead loved ones, etc. Despite 1 Timothy 2, 5, telling us that Jesus is the only mediator between God and man. Unbelievable, Brother Brian. 
I've been long suffering with Roy and that group of friends, but it's clear to me now they want to stay in Rome. It just makes me mad. Plus, I'm ashamed that I haven't kicked Rome more harshly these past eight years. Maybe I can use the channel I plan on creating to do so. We'll see. Anyway, brother, keep up the good work. I understand that you're going through many spiritual attacks and things of the flesh. However, remember that the trying of your faith worketh patience. See James 1.3. Um, also remember that I'll be praying for you, Catherine and Oliver, your friend and brother in Christ, the first initial. All right. There's another letter. February 10th, 2019. So, see, the problem is that a lot of these letters will come in and they'll get kind of underneath other things and then I move other stuff off of them and uh. okay February 10th 2019 brother Brian please help me understand chapters of Genesis 1 and 2 Genesis 1 has no restrictions on food Genesis 2 has restrictions on food Genesis 1 has plants and animals created before Adam humans male and female um, Genesis 2 has plants and animals created after Adam Eve woman purpose um, you get into this stuff here, and it's basically, I believe, the Lord created the heavens and the earth, and then he created some things before Adam so that Adam could name them and, and whatever else. Um, not going to go into a big study there, but the Lord did some things. He created it, and then he said, okay, Adam, here in the Garden of Eden, I'm going to recreate this stuff so you can see me doing it, and um, you can name the animals and whatever. Uh, number one, Adam before the garden in chapter two, his purpose to cultivate the garden. Number two, humans in chapter one, then two at least, male, female, purpose, dominion, and procreate. Chapter one has the earth covered with water. Chapter two has the earth as a desert. Eh, not, not really. There are many other subtle differences that I read also. However, they appear less important. Brother Brian, are chapters one and two in chronological order? No, I don't believe they are. I know there are verses saying Adam is the first man and Eve is the mother of all living. However, the context of those verses I see as references to Jesus, who is the all living. I do believe Adam is the first human. At present, I see two creations, humans, then Adam. Uh, brother, I don't question if the KJV Bible is true. My understanding is what I question. I love and desire the truth. You're about the only Bible teacher that I respect, and I need your help, and your videos do help. My disabled wife likes to make items like cross-stitching for people as gifts. Your wife may like to receive an apron or placemats, or a cloth Bible place marker. I believe my wife, F, wants to send her something like that, if that is okay. I don't mind spending postage if your address, P.O. Box, will receive it. Please let us know. Um, S.W. Uh, from Alabama. Um, uh, next page here it says about you exposing Stephen Anderson yes of course please continue exposing false prophets however Anderson is dangerous call leaders like him evil henchmen to remove those who expose him yes Psalm 91 is your protection and I know you use common sense just take precautions the dark web may be the way for believers to communicate in the future before the catching away of the church perilous times will occur I need a network of true believers so I can communicate Bible studies and prayer requests Jesus works through his body Nowadays, many churches are uh, inept, and churchgoers are weak and uninformed. Brother, I don't trust people like I used to. Then you're smart. <laughs> At age 60, I see decline in all the areas where in the past there was credibility. Of course, there has always been corruption in churches and governments, but I see extreme corruption where it did not exist in the 1960s and 70s. I know, I lived through it. <laughs> uh, Reagan was the last halfway decent president, and his wife was in the occult. Uh, Reagan was also the first president in U.S. history to invite the Pope. So Reagan was not a good man. Reagan was an actor. Remember that. Donald Trump is an actor. You know, it should tell you some things. Brother, you are about the only Bible-believing preacher I, uh, come, I can talk with. All the others have gone to heaven. My only other friend is Randy Pike, or, well, who is 90 and bedridden and on his way to heaven. Brother Pike was a missionary, a great man. We talk on the phone often. He says America is through. Ichabod, 1 Samuel 4.21. <laughs> Recently I was viewing a friend of yours. Uh, uh, 
you know, he's talking about Jeremy Carter here, and he says about how he was, he tried to write a comment, and Jeremy blocked him from the, the live stream thing. Jeremy's false. Sorry about that. Um, in this letter, God bless you and your family. I filled in words here and there for clarity. I look forward to hearing from you. I am 17 years older than you, and I saw the decline of America from 1959 until now. It is much more serious than most people imagine. Time here is short. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, like I said, Genesis, the thing of the first two chapters, it would take a whole study to really go over that. But I believe that, that God created the heavens and the earth, and then, or the heaven and the earth, and then, um, and then he kind of showed Adam the creation of some other things there um, in the Garden of Eden as a way to show his power. So, without getting into a big description on it. Um, this is from C. Uh, I'll just, I'll, no, I'll just say C. Brian, thank you for your preaching and teaching and time given to the ministry. You've been a help to me in times of research, entertainment, and loneliness. And I hope this gift can be of use to you and your family. Every day is a new day and has its own worry and evil. But each day that passes brings us closer to the day that our li lively hope comes to fruition. Hang in there. Keep the faith. Remember that you are helping people like me. May God bless you and his will be done in your life. Give all glory to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with peace and love. C. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, we get a lot of letters here. <laughs> a whole lot of letters. And I, I didn't even answer some of them. I mean, you get some, you know, whatever, just, you know, a little note or whatever else. I don't go over all the stuff. Um, dear Brother Brian, I want to first thank you for your ministry. It's, it's been a blessing to me. Thanks for the time and effort you put in to help us understand the Word of God. I really need your help, brother. I'm confused with 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 through 18. Could you give me a simple description of what happens during the rapture? First, the asleep in Christ, which are the dead, are risen, and go up first, then those that are alive. Why say they are asleep in the grave? Shouldn't the saints already be in heaven? I've seen YouTube videos on this subject, and it was more confusing watching them. I hope you can understand my confusion. I would appreciate it if you could go clear th this up for me. Thank you, and God bless you, your ministry, and your family, Brother Brian. K from KD are the initials of the name from Eagle Lake, uh, Minnesota. Um, <clears throat> what's going on there when it says the Bible says that they are asleep it's talking about their body okay it is not talking about that uh, the soul sleep or something like that no I believe when you die your soul and your spirit go to be with the Lord um, and uh, you know I don't have again to get into all this I'd have to do a really big study but you know your body is definitely resting in the ground and the resurrection will be this mortal shall put on immortality. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. So that's what the bodies are waiting for. Here we have um, from H.C. from Hansville, Washington. A nice little card here. Little birdies. <clears throat> it says, Dear Brian and Catherine, August 6th, 2019. Um, the days are going short and fast. This is just a quick note to say thanks for, thank you for serving the Lord so well and faithfully. As I write this, I just came in from a little walk with the Lord, crying and at the bottom of my barrel and, and walked back into some encouragement via your um, Brian... The Marks of a False Convert sermon. You are one of few preachers I can I guess listen to or something. Um, I have trouble sleeping alone, usual spiritual attacks with Worley and, and Derek Pr Prince are pretty much the only others I can sleep to. I have so much I could I would like to visit with you two about. My email is um, gives the thing there and the address and all that. 
So mainly just a quick but huge thank you for your ministry. Um, and a kiss that little scene stealer Oliver of yours for me. I pray for your safety and comfort. I am... I am very poor, but pray that God blesses you with plenty of money. Your humble sister in Christ, thank God, and that name is H there. Um, been wanting to write you for a while, but thought I better get this out to you so others, otherwise I'll never get a conversation going. You know what? give a full and complete letter but so many distractions does that does that make sense at all sorry i'm rather wore out right now worn out right now so yeah i get it i understand glad the videos have been a help <clears throat> okay this is from cm initials New Albany, Indiana. Brother Ryan, I hope this note finds you and your family well. Every day that goes by, I feel much closer. I feel we're much closer to being called up. I'm looking forward to that day. You mentioned once before you wish there was a greater division between saved and lost. I must agree. There are professing Christians I know aren't saved and others I still question. I only hope as the world gets darker, the light in us will get brighter. If persecution is that determining factor, then I'm for it. Please continue with the ministry, Brian, because I know many have been blessed by it. The Lord is using it. Well, before these answering letters videos come out, I'm going to be doing a live stream probably when I'm, as soon as I'm done recording this. and Because uh, there are some very disturbing things coming out on YouTube. It doesn't look like I'm going to be around much longer. So I knew the day was coming, but it's just kind of weird. Um, okay. Another letter. Dear Brian and Catherine, my 16-year-old son, Zach, turned me on to your ministry seven months, several months back. He played video games from about the age of five and continued playing them up until just over a year ago. God answered this mother's prayer. Zach told me he wanted to get to know the God who created him, gave up the video games, and began searching. He'd watched some of the false prophets with me on TBN and Daystar for a little while. I'd been watching them, searching for years, but told me he didn't like them. Zach can, excuse me, Z, there, I already said the name. Zach um, continued searching. I think he was greatly disturbed by all these different Bible versions and wanted desperately, um, wanted to know which one he should be reading. Then he found King James Video Ministries. It didn't take me long to realize I, am, I, after turning into your ministry, I was reading and watching nothing but a bunch of false prophets. Thank you for your ministry and in-depth studies. I did, however, learn a lot from these false prophets. God can use anyone. And Satan himself, as the old saying goes, will turn, tell you a thousand truths to get you to believe one lie. All the enemy needs is an in before he takes the mile. Nevertheless, I believe God allowed me to go through many things, trials, so I'd know how real the deception is, which is, although I have deleted many of these false prophets off my Facebook page, pages, I just don't go through the entire pages, very time-consuming, and besides all that, I believe it only shows how much I've grown. Sanctification process, you know, in Christ and His Holy Word, truth. I've learned from you too, Catherine. I watched your testimony, which Zach found on a different website because he couldn't find it on yours. I've always tried to dress nice, but the importance of dressing more modestly, and though I'm wearing some makeup on my profile pictures taken a while ago, I actually don't really wear makeup on a daily basis. So if you check me out on Facebook, you'll notice many of the recent posts are only from your ministry. Everyone else looks so foolish to me now. Can't believe how deceived I was. It's real. I've never heard anyone preach like you, and my eyes have been opened a lot about many things, mainly Catholicism. But this Christmas thing, brother and sister, please read on. This is disturbing, and now my son Zach doesn't wa want to watch or listen to your videos anymore. And he doesn't want me to either. He says it ruins the whole message. And King James Video Ministries is all I have left to watch. So we made a deal. 
Already got rid of the cell phones, hard on the wallet, but only eating organic foods now, drinking chaga tea, etc. Thank you for that. The deal is, I write you about this, and if your response back is a rebuke or simply we can agree to disagree over this issue, then the TV goes too. But if through this you letter your eyes may be opened, we'll continue tuning in. I mean, I'm glad God used my newly saved son to open my eyes, so here's what I've got. Probably heard it before. Yeah, I've heard all the anti-Christmas stuff. I was anti-Christmas for a while myself, and it was just a horrible, terrible time. I was out of fellowship with the Lord um, because I was sinning against liberty, like your son's doing. God's used me to show you the truth, to preach the Word of God and everything else, but then you just go and shut me off because of a liberty issue. Uh, that's, that's a problem. Christmas is a pagan holiday. Uh, so is a whole lot of other things in the society that you continue to do. December 25th was not the actual birthday of Jesus Christ. Of course, I understand that. It was the birthday, birthday of the wicked ruler Nimrod. No, actually it's Tammuz's birthday. You got that wrong. Christmas equals Christ plus Mass. No, it does not. <laughs> it does not. That is a lie. As in the massacre of Christ. Um, where's that in the, in the celebration of Christmas? As I've said many times, well, I've looked it up on YouTube and I looked it up at Google and whatever else and Christ and Mass go together and make Christmas. Uh, okay. Um, assuming that that's true, then where is the Mass of Christ in a traditional Santa Claus coming down the chimney and all that other stuff, which is pagan, where's the mass of Christ in the celebration? When you celebrate Christmas, you are actually celebrate the kill celebrating the killing of Christ on the cross. Prove it. Where's it at? The, the Christmas tree or something? I mean, see, see, you listen to a bunch of people that sin against liberty, that get you to mess around with liberty issues in the Bible, and all that they're doing really is the little satanic spirit in these people is getting you to turn against a Bible-believing preacher. One of the few legitimate ministries online that's teaching people the Word of God, and I've been reading all these letters and everything else, people's lives changed, but you're going to turn on me in this ministry because of a liberty issue. Because some devil out there has made a big issue over something that the Bible says every man's supposed to you know be fully persuaded in his own mind Romans chapter 14 you make up your own mind nowhere in the Bible does it say when you become a Christian you have to give up your customs and your traditions of your people it doesn't say that God is for segregation not integration God doesn't want everybody to become a Jew or whatever else or you've got to give up your cultures and your you're supposed to have those things and I don't you know we don't even celebrate every aspect of Christmas either but I'll continue reading here um, I know you don't think that, but would you celebrate your wife's birthday or your, on your ex-girlfriend's birthday instead simply because everyone else does it and it's a perfectly op perfect opportunity to witness to others? That has nothing to do with it. Desperate. Think about it. All these church buildings with the male members on them pointing up towards heaven, everyone celebrating Christ must. Um, do you not see the Catholicism here? And where is Christmas in the King James Bible? I wonder how God feels about all this. We are the church. The Bible speaks out about the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree is actually satanic Babylonian. Uh, no, it isn't. It doesn't say that. <laughs> Jeremiah 10, verses 2 through 4. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. Spoken to Jews. Okay? And be not dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. It's talking about carving an idol. It's not talking about cutting down a, a, a spruce tree and bringing it into your house. And decking it is meaning that they're covering it. They're, it's like gold leaf and things on it. That's what it's talking about. If you go back, the ancient actual uh, Saturnalia system and whatever else, they used palm trees, not fir trees. I, oh, I, I've studied all this stuff. I know a lot more about the anti-Christmas stuff than most of you people do. That's why I don't celebrate a lot of the pagan aspects of it and whatever else. Again, you know, we, we like to see lights. We give our son Christmas gifts. We read the, the, the you know, story of how Jesus Christ was born. We go, you know, hey, look at the pretty lights at night. Isn't that pretty? Red and green, the collars of God's throne in the north. You know, the snowy north, you know? And the jingle bells, the, the bells that are on the horses there that are going to be there in the millennial kingdom.
you know, we want to try to be as Germanic as we can, you know, because that's our ancestry. Oh, then you don't do this. Whatever. People. Christians were not to follow the traditions of this world. Chapter and verse. We're not of this world. Didn't Jesus speak out to the Pharisees about their traditions? Yeah, they overthrew the scriptures with their traditions. How am I overthrowing the scriptures? I'm not. I work at a secular job and I've noticed when the holidays roll around, everyone celebrates them. Maybe not all Halloween, but everyone Christmas. Uh, atheists don't. A lot of atheists don't. A lot of other wicked people hate Christmas. You going to join them? Jehovah's Witnesses don't. You going to join the Jehovah's Witnesses? I mean, do you really want to uh, live in a, in a country where Christmas is just kicked out and there's no more Hark the Herald Angels Sing or, or Joy to the World or Oh Come All Ye Faithful playing in grocery stores and shopping malls? What really amazes me the most about this whole thing is how atheists, sodomites, Buddhists, Hindus, on and on will celebrate Christmas. No, they don't. No, they don't. What are you talking about? Wouldn't it be something if Nimrod actually was born on December 25th and Jesus, Jesus, September 11th, which is why Satan hates that date. I can't prove it, but the, the little anti-Christmas people, they can theorize it and everything. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. If Jesus was born in September, what's nine months before September? Uh, December. What if Jesus was conceived on December 25th? Oh, you can't prove it. Well, you can't prove your stuff either. I can't, uh, I can't prove it, but I can certainly, certainly can and do believe it. After all, isn't, that, isn't this Satan's plan? Bringing everyone together, more cunning than any creature in the field. King Jesus is coming soon. The devil knows his time is short. The turning away, the deception, it's not going to get better, only worse. Remember Satan deceiving a third of God's angels, and you think he can't deceive you, this Christmas thing, dot, dot, dot. God bless you, or God bless your sister in Christ. I'm, I'm wicked and I'm evil, and you got to quit watching my ministry, but God bless me. Um, P.S. Please excuse any misspelling. I realize you're busy, but if I never hear back, I will at least know where you stand on this issue. Thank you. Uh, grow up. Okay? That's, that's why I said this whole thing, people that sin against liberty, that they get all mixed up. They get all messed up. The Bible is crystal clear. Let me read it one more time. I just get so stinking irritated with these people. And, and this little satanic spirit that's out there where you can, you can slip in a little thing on a liberty issue and turn somebody completely against the ministry. Um, Romans chapter 14, verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. Okay, and it goes into the eating thing then. How can't you get that? It's a liberty issue. But just go on and disobey the scriptures and turn against Bible-believing ministries because you disagree in one point. Here's another one, I guess. Um, B.A. from Missouri City, Texas. Dear Sir, finally I have found someone else who believes, as I do about Scripture, about the early church, about how everything was corrupted to the point into the modern day church, little c is the church of Laodicea. I am so done with the so-called church and their phallus steeples along with idol worship. There is a church I visited on Easter where the pastor has everyone's attention for 20 minutes and he chooses to spend 10 talking about his favorite sport team. Of course, I walked out and never returned. I have not done the Christ Mass in 15 years. And I am sickened by these churches the celebrating, the celebrate hiding Ishtar eggs as if that has anything to do with Jesus' death and resurrection. Getting to the point, I would like to start up a, a friendship, a start a friendship up with you as I have found no one of like mind in the Houston area. I do have one like-minded friend in Minnesota and we'd be happy to introduce you if interested. No, thank you. People that make a big deal over the holidays. I mean, again, let me just, just, just say this, because we're right in the Christmas season and all that other stuff. There have been times when we've been too busy, just don't really need anything or whatever else, and we don't even bother doing anything about Christmas. So it's, oh, look at the pretty lights. That's all, you know? 
We don't ever do anything with Santa Claus or all the other stuff like that. We don't put a tree up and, and bow down to it and whatever else. And if people imply that, it's because they got rocks for brains. K.D. Eagle Lake, Minnesota. Dear Brian, thanks for taking the time to read my letter. I have learned so much reading my King James Bible and listening to you on YouTube. Your ministry is a blessing to me and others, I'm sure. I've written a letter previously about information on a sermon on the rapture, the dead or sleeping rising out of the graves, not to be overwhelming, but I have another topic I would like to hear you teaching on. Romans 1.7 and 1 Corinthians 1.2 mentioned, called to be saints. You know that Roman Catholics half worship and pray to saints and that the church ordains to or canonize the saints. Non-Catholics, I hear say that if you are saved, then you are a saint. My perception is a saint is more holy than your normal saved Christian, kind of like uh, getting all the crowns of heaven. I feel if I call myself a saint, then I am not being humble. I would so love to hear a sermon on this from you, brother. Thanks and God bless. Um, don't call yourself a saint. I'm not Saint Brian or whatever else. I am a saint by my standing in Christ Jesus. But I don't, it's not a title. Okay, I preach the word of God, but I don't walk around, you know, saying, uh, call me, you know, Holy Pastor Brian or something like this. Okay, uh, you are a saint, but you are not to use the title saint. This next one is from Nashville, Tennessee. No name given. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of questions here. In your opinion, what is a good way to conduct effective research on anything? Well, offline materials are always better than online materials. Uh, Wikipedia is a good place to start to get a foundation for things that you should research, but never use it as your final beginning and ending thing there, unless it's just a common, you know, uh, I'm just trying to show you that Wikipedia says that there's X number of Christians in the world, just to, as a starting point to show that what most people think is false or something like that. But uh, research... Um, is best done offline in book form. Um, number two, what are the gifts of the Holy Ghost and does every Christian receive all of them once they, get, once they get saved? No, the gifts of the Holy Ghost are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, and there's a lot of different gifts and no, every Christian does not get all of them. How do you become a Bible scholar? By wasting a lot of your life at a Bible seminary. <laughs> uh, quite simple. Um, to be can considered as a Bible scholar, that's what it's going to be. You're going to have to go to some you know, university and get a lot of earned degrees and honorary doctorates and the whole thing. Um, I don't consider a man that knows the Bible really well, I don't consider them to be a Bible scholar. I don't consider myself to be a Bible scholar. Um, I'm a preacher and teacher of God's Word, but a scholar, you're getting into that scribe type of religious guy that everybody says is great and whatever. You know, eh. I don't want to mess with it. How do you get closer to God? Prayer and years of time. The life of sanctification in the in a Christian as a Christian. Does God reveal secrets? Yes. Um, what does it mean to use God's name in vain? Um, well, uh, Oh, what the Brian? Oh, what, what, what's that guy doing out there? Uh, that's that's about the ugliest. I mean, Brian this and Brian that. You, know, you say, well, huh? Well, you're using my name in vain. You're, you, I'm not out there and, and, you know, whatever. Why would you use my name in place of a cuss word? Well, see, I'm illustrating a point. I'm not God, but I'm illustrating a point. You say, oh, my, gee, that was good cake. Huh? Oh, my, gee, that's my favorite movie. Oh, you know, G this or G that, or saying J C, you know, Jesus Christ about something. You're using his name in vain. See, um, it's a bad thing to do. Was it? What does it mean to become one flesh with your spouse? Um, when you get married and in the marriage bed, you come together in sexual intimacy, um, with the intent of living together as husband and wife with the intent of the man saying, I am now her spiritual covering, and she saying, he is my spiritual covering, I'm going to submit to him. Um, you know, in marriage, in matrimony, it is the marriage bed. And you become one flesh. Uh, there's a spiritual connection there that happens um, where uh, 
now I am responsible for my wife's actions and she is responsible for my actions. I'm not responsible for your actions out there because I'm not married to you. I got saved at the age of 12 and Jesus started his ministry at 12. Do you think that's a coincidence? No, I don't know the whole you know, thing there. And Jesus did not start his ministry at the age of 12. Okay, he was 33. Or 30, excuse me, 33 and a half when he died. 30 when he started his earthly ministry. Okay, asking the guys questions in the temple and whatever else, the, the you know, rabbis and whatever, asking them questions is not a starting in ministry. Okay. Um, when going through bad times, how do you praise the Lord? Well, thank Him for what He's putting you through. Uh, the Bible says in all things, you know, that you're to give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Simple. Do you believe in good vibes? Uh, <laughs> um, I believe in the discernment of the Holy Spirit, that He'll give it to you. Uh, so that's all I can say about that. SV. Brian, I can think of no better place to invest this money except your ministry. I appreciate all that you do for the, the body of Christ in these last days, which are ramping up now and more as we see the day approaching. It is a lovely walk, but it is a blessed, a lonely walk, excuse me, it is a lonely walk, but a blessed walk. I have been saved for many years now. Um, things did not work out as I had hoped, but I still, but I'm still here carrying on, staying out of the Babel buildings, being misunderstood, being about, fearing about the mark of, bearing about the, okay, bearing about the mark of the Lord Jesus. Good, good prospering in your new location in Christ SV. Thank you. Another one here. Dear Brother Brian, hope you are making progress with the property. I've been praying you can get done what needs to be done before winter. Uh, most of the stuff we got done. So I've been doing a lot of stacking firewood lately. I got some stretcher off in the coming week and plan on doing lots of tracting in the PA wilds on my CRF 230L Honda. Good bike. I've, I've never had one, but they seem to be pretty good. Praying also you find a new ministry uh, headquarter. God bless you and continued prayers and support for you and your family. Again, Brother T from Pennsylvania. Um, we actually, uh, just to say this, I had a dual sport motorcycle and had to end up selling it because we needed money for another vehicle. Um, didn't really want to sell it, but... You know, I've done that before. Um, another little letter here. Uh, there you go. It says, Dear Brian, I know the word Trinity is not in the Bible, but like the word rapture, the concept is. No, it isn't. I don't like the Roman Catholic's definition of three persons in one Godhead. I would probably sum it up as three entities working together as one. They're not three entities. It's one being. I don't see the Father as the superior God with the white beard and Jesus, his Son, whom is a bit inferior, and the Holy Ghost as the third wheel spirit with some power, shown as a dove. What I think or feel doesn't matter. I go by what I read in the King James Holy Bible. And there's no entities in there, brother. And understanding and discernment through the Holy Ghost. Key scripture I've read that show the three entities of the Trinity being together in the, in the same verses are as follows. Matthew 28, 19, John 14, 26, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. 1 Peter 1, 2, Ephesians 2, 18, Jude 20, 21. Jude 20, 21. Uh, I didn't know there were 20 chapters in Jude. <laughs> 1 John 5, 7, um, and it's it's 20, I think he means 20 through 21, but he put the, you know, thing there. Um, 1 John 5, 7, and I see the same or similar theme in the Spirit through the Son to the Father. Why not just say God? The Holy Ghost told me to meditate on Philippians 2, 5 through 8, and Colossians 2, 8 through 9. Uh, yeah, do that. There's no entities in there. I write to you, brother, because I respect you as a King James Bible-believing, God-fearing pastor. I have no King James Bible churches around. 
Christians around me, not even any churches, religions using the KJB about the truth, Brian, not about me. Take care, God bless. K is the name, the first initial, I should say. Uh, there's no entities in there. I mean, just stick with what the Bible says. There's no persons, there's no entities. These three are one, not in unity, in agreement, in, they're just one being, okay? I know it doesn't say one being. It doesn't say one being either. But common sense here. People, we're made in God's image. You don't see three of me. There's not three entities of me standing here. Dear Brian and family, I watch your videos and like your teachings. Here's something for to help your ministry. It was, I was a, I, I am a King James Bible believer. I hope your family as well. Keep up the good teachings. Truly yours. Another name, T, here from Sierra Vista, Arizona. T-R is the initials. Okay, I think I've arrived at my last letter. Yeah. Um, dear Brother Denlinger, Thank you for your work and production of videos on YouTube. I have watched many of your videos and have found them to be inspirational and doctrinally profitable. There are other questions I do not see where you have previously addressed and would like to find out what you know about them. This letter is my attempt to establish an email dialogue with you and your ministry and to virtually assemble with others of like mind and faith. That's coming to an end. I can pretty much tell you that um, because of some of this nutty stuff on YouTube that's coming out. The second reason prompting this Writing, I have found myself in the position of defending the KJV Bible on numerous occasions. The most recent is in an email to Sunrise Ministries, Billy Crone, Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> After watching a video of his titled Charismatic Chaos and hearing his reading of a modern version verse, I got a reply from his associate pastor, Thomas Roseberry, which included a KJV-only rebuttal PDF authored by Billy Crone. already answered it in another video many years ago. Uh, bro brother Roseberry, I wouldn't call him brother, also included his My Thoughts on Bible Versions. They both claim they are not anti-KJVers, but statements were quotes and quotes from James R. White's writings led me to think otherwise. Yeah. Crone and, and this other, I don't know the other, but Crone's definitely a liar. I've already attacked that guy years ago. Both Crone's and Roseberry's writings on versions were at best a sophomark parroting of Mr. White's writings. The most concerning issue to me was the level of willful ignorance demonstrated by what are supposed to be spiritual leaders. Brother Roseberry seemed to have a sense of pride that their pews were populated with the NIV for parishioners to use since it was no longer in print. He also expressed disagreement with the TNIV because he believed God was not pleased with non-gender TNIV rendering. I'm thinking, what an oxymoron and lack of discernment. Yeah, it's coming out from the same people. You know, TNIV is brought out by the NIV people. So how can you say the NIV is okay, but the TNIV is bad? I generated separate detailed reply rebuttals to Crone's KGV only rebuttal and Roseberry's thoughts on Bible versions after watching your NIV to KGV part one and downloading your PDF TNIV perversions. I decided your testimony and work were potentially much better for the Holy Spirit to convict them if they are not already of a reprobate mind on this issue. I sent them a link to, to the video and attached a condensed version of your TNIV perversions. I took the liberty of doing an OCR conversion of your per, TNIV perversions document and converted it to an Excel spreadsheet. I sorted out all the sorted out all the word phrases alphabetically and reduced it to 94 pages from the 216 as downloaded. I'm including a two-page sample of the rendering for your review. I will send you the spreadsheet in PDF via email if you wish. Uh, S H from North Augusta, South Carolina. Here's what the page looks like there. Okay, not going to show a whole lot more on that, but. Um, I did a whole big collation on that stuff years ago. There was a, a sister I knew at the time that actually Billy Crone's church was originally up near Niagara Falls in, in New York State. And um, I say up, I'm thinking at the time I was in Pennsylvania, so I'd say up, down. <laughs> We're in Maine nor now, northern Maine. So down in New York State near Niagara Falls. And I did a whole thing refuting Billy Crone and she actually went, this older sister that I knew, she actually went to Billy Crone's church and she went there and she got in an argument with him and a couple other people. 
and then she uh, actually went and she was putting DVDs, my DVDs, on people's windshields. So a uh, little while after that, Billy Crone actually announced that he was called of God to Las Vegas. So he left there. Um, I guess maybe he was getting too many questions on the issue and he felt uncomfortable, but he's a total heretic. Um, I don't believe for one second that Billy Crone is a saved man. So um, as far as a, a different version of the PDF thing, I don't know what to say on that because it's kind of, they came out with their newer, you know, 2011 or what it was, 2010, 2011 NIV, and said oh, it's no longer, you know, the 1984 and the TNIV are no longer going to be printed by us, and, you know, so whatever. Um, but there, that's the end of the letters. Um, so we'll see what the future of the ministry is. I'm going to stop this and get these videos edited, get them online. How much, if I can even get them up online, I don't even know. Um, I mean, they literally just came out with a thing. And you'll see that I'm going to be doing a live stream here in just a couple minutes, but they literally just came out with a thing saying that they're going to ban channels that are harassing and offensive and whatever else. And it's just, I'm just looking at the language and the thing thinking, yeah, they're going to nail me. If the Lord doesn't protect this ministry, I mean, and see the whole thing is, here's, here's the thing, brethren. Um, as the Lord allows us to be silenced, remember that he is sending a famine for hearing the word of the Lord because the people are wicked. The Lord is going to close doors of salvation to judge people. Um, he's getting ready for the time of Jacob's trouble to begin. And the thing that kicks it off is the catching up of the body of Christ. There is no signing of some peace agreement between the Jews and the Muslims. That is a lie. There's not one verse of Scripture to back that up. He confirms the covenant with many for one week. Back in Daniel chapter 9, it doesn't say anything about Jews and Muslims. Okay, uh, I believe it's going to be the Catholic Church run by the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to come in and he's going to confirm the covenant that he's going to make with the Jews. All right? They're already signing covenants. Again, I've talked about that in other studies. It's already been going on. So they're going to confirm a covenant, and I believe that, that the, the carrot on the stick to dangle in front of the Jews there that the Catholics are going to do, Zionism and fascist Catholicism are the two warring factions in this world. Islam is a pawn of the Vatican, and the Vatican is going to say to the Jews, we want to have total control of the Temple Mount because we have this Pope, this newest Pope or whatever, the Christ has returned, and we want him to be sitting there in the Temple Mount. You give us total control over that, and the carrot on the stick that we're dangling in front of your face is the destruction of the Islamic people. We're going to destroy Muslim, or the, the, we're going to destroy Islam. That's what they're going to do. He goes out conquering and to conquer. Who's he conquering? You know, the Antichrist when he shows up in Revelation chapter 6. Uh, that's what's coming. Okay, and so the next big event is the catching up of the body of Christ. Because the Antichrist isn't showing up until we're up there. Revelation chapter 5, there's blood-redeemed Christians in heaven praising the Lord. Uh, how they get there. And they're crowned, too, I might add. Um, they're there in heaven. So, Christians in heaven before the Antichrist can show up. We are the ones who are letting the Antichrist. So that's what's next. And um, so as we get closer to that time, uh, I do believe our speech is going to be censored more and more. So uh, I think my days are numbered on YouTube. And when it goes down, it's, be, it's going to be the Lord's doing. The Lord is going to allow that to happen as a way to just cut off um, this these wicked uh, people out there. You don't want the gospel. You've heard it for years and years and years and rejected it and twisted my words, twisted, you know, things I've said and whatever else. I've tried my best to, to answer people and do my best for the body of Christ. And people just stab me in the back and whatever else. And, and you know, whatever, it's me. What? Okay, I'm, I'm an imperfect preacher. Yeah, but they'll tear this book to shreds, people out there. Uh, that's not going to keep going on. God's mercy is running out. So I'm um, going to get these letters up. Hopefully they'll be on the channel and you can watch them. And I'm um, sorry to everybody that I took so long to answer letters, but I uh, appreciate hearing from people. And in the future, it might be all offline. So we'll see. That's going to be it. Thank you for your letters. Thank you for your support. And uh, please do keep us in your prayers.